नमस्कार फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू सेशन 18 इन आवर कोर्स ऑन ऑपरेशंस मैनेजमेंट एज यू आर अवेयर दैट वी हैव ऑलरेडी फिनिश्ड डिस्कशन ऑफ थ्री वीक्स एंड करंटली वी आर डिस्कसिंग द फोर्थ वीक एंड आवर टॉपिक इज प्लांट लोकेशन इन प्लांट लोकेशन टुडे इज द थर्ड सेशन दैट वी आर डिस्कसिंग एंड अर्लियर वी हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस्ड द बेसिक एस्पेक्ट्स ऑफ ऑपरेशन मैनेजमेंट स्कोप्स ऑब्जेक्टिव्स fundamental nature of operations management we have studied product design and development we have also studied sales forecasting or demand forecasting and now we are seeing that if a company has decided that what they want to produce where the plant must be located and in plant location we have already discussed the facilities planning what are the basic thoughts that must go while we select a plant for or select a location for our plant what are the thoughts that we that must come to our mind when we are taking a decision related to the location of our facility or the location of our factory or the location of our enterprise we have seen what are the factors governing this decision and we have seen that there are internal factors external factors then there are controllable factors non controllable factors there are government policies there are rules and regulations and guidelines that have to be followed when we take this most important strategic decision of deciding where we are going to manufacture the product that we have developed during product design and development and that is the basic thing that we are studying currently in this week in next week we will see that once we have decided that how the plant is going to look like inside the plant how and where which facilities will be located once we have decided the region where we are going to put our facility or the factory within the factory which facility will be at which location for example the residential quarters the manufacturing plant the air conditioning unit the grounds and the effluent treatment plant which facility is going to be located at which particular section that is going to be discussed in next week and will fall under plant layout so currently we are discussing plant location that how we can decide that where we want to produce and today's session is focused on case study of uttarakhand as iit roorkee is established in uttarakhand so we have decided that we will try to see that why lot of companies are coming and setting up their facilities in uttarakhand we will try to highlight maybe in another 15 20 minutes the may be attractiveness of uttarakhand as a industrial hub that why uttarakhand is being chosen as a choice as a may be attractive place for setting up of manufacturing facilities we will see what are the incentives given by the government of uttarakhand for promoting the development of industry in the state so we will try to see that similar policies may be existing in other states also and we want to understand that it is the government policies it is the industrial climate that is prevailing in the state that motivates the industrialists to set up their plant in that particular state there are number of such examples where a company wanted to set up a facility in a particular state but then had to shift because of maybe public unrest or because of the government apathy or maybe because they were not able to convince their employees to go and work in a particular state so there are number of problems associated when you have to decide that which is going to be the most optimal location for setting up of the plant and uttarakhand as a state is promoting the industry in order to give more and more employment to the people of uttarakhand and what are these facilities specially for msme industry that we are going to see today in today's session so let us see first the case study of uttarakhand so policies of uttarakhand government directly we are starting from the policies the msme the full form as i have just used the word or the notation msme in the introductory part of today's session msme stands for micro small medium enterprise so we can say micro small 
and medium enterprises. So we have developed at Uttarakhand a MSME policy that the government is going to support the industry focused on micro, small and medium sector enterprises. Then there is a special integrated industrial incentive policy which is commonly called as the hill policy. So that is another policy which has been framed by the government of Uttarakhand in order to improve the facilities or the industry in the hill regions. Then central capital investment subsidy scheme. So central capital investment subsidy scheme is another policy. Then related to ladies, you can see there is a Mahila Udyami Vishesh Protsahan Yojana. So Mahila Udyami means for female entrepreneurs, there is a special package or special policy which is supporting them to uh, maybe start earning their livelihood, start small scale business at the village or at the town level and become self-sufficient, self-reliant as well as empowered. So Mahila Udyami Vishesh Protsahan Yojana is another Yojana by the government of Uttarakhand. Then Chief Minister Swarojgar Yojana, there is also maybe self-employment scheme also started by the government of Uttarakhand. So we can see that there is a broad spectrum of schemes focused on improving the industrial health of the state in order to develop an industrial climate in the state. More and more people within the state can contribute to the industrial growth of the state with the help of these schemes as well as people from other states can come and take advantage of these schemes which have been launched by the government of Uttarakhand and can lead to maybe uh, more profit making enterprises because we will see in today's session there are other schemes also which are promoting the industrialist and entrepreneurs from all across the country for setting up their plants in the state of Uttarakhand. So this gives the broader policies which are framed by the government of Uttarakhand in order to improve the industries in the state. Then there is another list of policies of the Uttarakhand government, freight subsidy scheme gadget, mega industrial and investment policy, startup policy. There is another policy government of India has also focused on startup, maybe startup India, stand up India. There is a policy by state go central government also. So there is a startup policy by the state, purchase preference policy, mega textile park policy. So textile, textile park has been initiated. So that is basically to improve the textile industry of the state. So we can see that startup policy, purchase preference policy as the words are self-explanatory purchase preference for purchasing preference will be given to the products produced in the state at least that is what I understand from this policy. So we, our target is to understand not the nitty gritties of each and every policy, but we are studying plant location and in that one important factor is the thrust of the government towards improving the industry. And we can see that there is a long list of policies established by the government for improving the industrial health of the state. So we may not be going into the each and every policy because each and every policy will have a policy document which may run into number of pages, who is eligible, who is not eligible, what are the prerequisites, how you have to apply. So we are not going to go into the nitty gritty of each policy, but we will definitely like to understand that what are the general policies which decide the location of a plant in a particular state or in a particular region. So here we have seen two important maybe lists of policies specifically framed by the government of Uttarakhand. Then coming on to one policy let us take an example that is the MSME policy. So, the government of Uttarakhand has sanctioned the MSME policy or maybe the framed the MSME policy 2015 for promoting investment in MSME sector. MSME full form we have already seen in the beginning micro, small and medium enterprises. So in micro, small and medium enterprises the government is giving lot of thrust for 
setting up of these type of enterprises in the state. How they are doing it through investment promotion as well as to incentivize the MSME. So, government is giving lot of incentives to entrepreneurs, to industrialists, to businessmen who are setting up MS, who are setting up uh, the plants as per the MSME policy of the state. So, the policy aims at utilizing the local resources. As Uttarakhand is a hill state, there is lot of uh, maybe flora and fauna as well as the forest cover in the state. So, there can be a lot of forest waste that is developed in the state. So, the policy aims at utilizing the local resources. So, the resources may not be the material only, the resources can be the human resource also, the resources can be the infrastructural resource also. So, the policy aims at utilizing the local resources and to generate employment opportunities and promoting self-employment, skill development in the youth. So, the policy is focused on empowering the youth, empowering the youth by skill development, by making them learn new and new skills, so that they can become self-reliant, self-employed, because Uttarakhand has a history of people young people moving to other states for employment. So, the government has given a thrust on developing the or uh, for coming up with employment opportunities for the state youth or the youth of the state where they can work within the state only. Now, in order to develop since our topic is plant location. So, from location point of view, the state has been divided into four categories. So, we will see the categorization of the state and since the different locations, there are few areas in Uttarakhand which are hilly in nature, there are other areas which are plain or relatively plain in nature. So, the whole state has been divided into four categories. There is category A, B, C and D and the details of each category are given here. Category A includes the districts of Pithoragarh, Uttarkashi, Chamoli, Champawat, Rudraprayag and Bageshwar. Category B includes districts of Pauri Garhwal, Teri Garhwal, Almoda and all hilly development blocks of district Dehradun other than Vikasnagar which is relatively plain, Doiwala is plain, Sahaspur is plain and Rajpur. All hilly development blocks of district Nainital other than Haldwani and Ramnagar which are relatively plain. So, basically the state is divided into four zones. Now, from plant location point of view, whenever an industrialist would like to set up a facility or set up a factory, he can take a decision that which particular category or which particular district is more suitable for his kind of manufacturing activity, for his kind of service industry for which he wants to set up his enterprise. So, four categories are there and each category may involve different types of incentives and even may categorize the industry also. For example, in category A only these type of industries can be set up or they will be incentivized or they will be given incentives. For other category of areas or district, some other type of industry may be the focus and only that type of industry will get the incentives. So, A and B is given. Similarly, C and D categories are also there. So, maybe one of the criteria for categorization is the reasons located above 650 meters from the sea level. So, here you can see there is another categorization that is C, similarly category D. So, the, we, the whole state is divided into four categories and now category specific industry has also been outlined that we will see. So, category A and B, they are eligible for fiscal incentives or financial incentives. What type of industries can be set up in category A and B? So, if you remember in A and B, we have outlined that few districts are in category A, few districts are in category B. Now, A and B are together here. So, A and B, you can have non-polluting manufacturing enterprises of green and orange category. So, uh, there is a categorization 
of the enterprises. So, we, here we have seen two. So, we are not going into the categorization of the enterprise or the color coding of the enterprises, but we can see that non polluting manufacturing enterprises are a focus area in category A and B. Thrust sector industries as notified under special industrial package. So, there is a special industrial package which notifies that this is the thrust area, these type of industries we must develop in a particular area of the state. For example, it can be herbal or a pharmaceutical industry which can be developed in a particular zone. So, the zoning has been done and if you want to set up your plant in a particular state, today's case study is Uttarakhand and yours is a pharmaceutical industry. You cannot set up a pharmaceutical industry anywhere you feel like because the state has already categorized the complete area into four zones and within the zones also as per the special industrial package, the pharmaceutical I am taking an example may be given a particular area that pharmaceutical industry will be developed in category this only and in, uh, as in our case we say category A and B. So, you have to set up the plant there only. I am not saying that pharmaceutical is specifically for category A and B. I have just taken an example that a particular area may be earmarked for one type of industry only. Activities which have been granted status of industry by the state government, they can be set up in category A and B district. Biotechnology can be in category A and B areas. Protected agriculture and horticulture, cold storage activities can be in category A and B. So, it is for it is the it is making the life of the entrepreneur or the industrialist easy. Because suppose he wants to set up a cold storage facility, it is very well known to him before he starts searching for the plant location that cold storage activities are being promoted in category A and category B areas of the state of Uttarakhand. So, he can only focus on those areas and try to locate a site where the go down or the cold storage facility can be developed. So, in a way the government is helping the entrepreneurs or the industrialists in, the, in their process of plant location or finding out the exact location or optimal location where they can set up their facility. Similarly, petrol diesel pumping station gas godowns are also may be in category A and B areas only or category A and B regions only. Only manufacturing activities shall be eligible in category C and D. So, we can see that biotechnology focuses in category A and B regions. Manufacturing activities are eligible for category C and D regions. River bed material based industries including stone crushers will not be eligible in entire state for any incentives. So, they have categorically mentioned that a specific type of industry will not get any incentives. Capital in investment made on transport vehicle exclusively for the purpose of transportation, marketing of raw material and finished good products shall be eligible for capital investment subsidy. So, there are different types, this is one example which is on transport vehicles, but there are number of such examples where the capital investment subsidy is being promoted by the state of Uttarakhand. So, investment made on necessary additional construction, expansion, renovation or building whether you have you own that building or you have leased that building for a long period of time for conduct of enterprise will also be eligible for subsidy on capital investment. So, you get subsidized if you are doing some renovation or you are expanding the already existing facility. So, the government is supporting these type of activities in order to improve the industrial base within the state. There are number of fiscal incentives and concessions. We have seen two, three types of things we have seen that how the state is promoting the industry. They have different types of policies. Within the policies, we have focused on MSME sector only. Within MSME, we have seen the whole state is divided into four A, B, C and D regions and each region has been earmarked for a specific set of industry. So, apart from that, we have seen that they are giving capital uh, subsidies also. So, fiscal incentives and concessions 
organizations or other promotional uh, maybe schemes of the government in order to improve the industry. Some of the schemes are listed here. There is an investment promotion assistance that is capital subsidy is given by the government, interest subsidy is given, reimbursement of VAT which is very important these days GST has been implemented. So, the government has to relook and see that how they can implement or they can incentivize the industry through maybe some reduction in GST. I have no idea about that, I am not an economist, but maybe some relooking at the GST regime can be done. Then concession on stamp duty is another good incentive for the industry. Reimbursement of electricity bills, special state transport subsidy as we have seen that there, there is a capital subsidy on the transport of raw material as well as the finished good of uh, good from the industries within the situated or located within the state of Uttarakhand. So, special state transport subsidy is available. Then coming on to the infrastructural support, we can see that there is an uh, establishment of a land bank, then infrastructural development fund has been created for MSMEs, then special industrial state estate for MSMEs has been created and establishment of new industrial estates is in the maybe offing for the people who want to come and set up their industry in the state of Uttarakhand. So, again I am reading it for you for better maybe at least few things can be there in our thinking process whenever we talk of plant location. The special industrial estate Maybe sometimes we develop special areas for MSME clusters only or MSME uh, type of industries only where you have only micro, medium and small scale industry. Similarly, industrial estates maybe as we have seen a textile park has been created. Similarly, new industrial estates can be identified and created. Maybe the government is promoting these type of activities where industries can set up. If you, if you remember, I have discussed this thing in the earlier session also that whenever a big manufacturing unit is established, they may not be manufacturing each and every part that goes into their product. For example, a car is being manufactured. So, the company may not be making each and every part, sub component or equipment that goes into the car. They will be maybe majorly involved in assembling the car, the ancillary units will be developing the parts or the components for the car. Similarly, whenever you have an industrial estate, there can be industries which are supplementing each other, which are complementing each other. So, there can be a um, there can be a product made by company A and there can be another product made by company B and A and B can combine and make a product C which is maybe uh, uh, a final or a end product which can go into the market. So, you have a industrial estate where different types of companies can be there or maybe same type of companies can be developed as a park maybe for example, a software park where you have different software companies working together in different areas or different zones. Then establishment of multi-storied estate, upgradation of existing industrial state. So, there both the things are possible. We can, the government is developing new industrial estates as well as the government is also focusing on expansion or renovation of the old or existing industrial estates also. Then establishment of vendor and ancillary parks as I have already told, if we have a very big or maybe large scale manufacturing unit coming up in the state, then the government is promoting the development of the ancillary units in the vicinity, so that the transportation cost from the ancillary unit to the main plant can be minimized or can be optimized. So, the establishment of vendors and ancillary parks are coming up, government is promoting that type of setup, then interventions under the cluster development scheme. Now, in cluster development scheme, government is focusing on the development of clusters. For example, Rurki at one time was famous for the surveying equipment. So, coming 
up with the international challenge maybe the manufacturers are not able to match up with the products that are coming in the open maybe uh, market from the other countries also so maybe a cluster can be developed where a central facility can be created where we can have all the latest machines and equipment which can maybe help the industry to come up with the quality that is matching the quality being provided by the international players so that kind of cluster development approach is being promoted by the for the msme sector by the government of uttarakhand so that a cluster is able to match up the quality of the product being produced by the international competitors so the state is coming up with number of schemes already there are number of schemes as we have seen in the first and the second slide where they are trying to promote the industry to come they want the industry must set up their plants in uttarakhand it is going to help the economic health of the state it is going to provide employment to the youth of uttarakhand it is going to lead to the skill development of the youth of uttarakhand so the government is giving lot of focus for the industrial development of the state and it is not only the state of uttarakhand there are other states also which are focusing on the development of industry since we are located at uttarakhand we have focused on the government schemes that are focused on development of industry in the state of uttarakhand so we have seen that plant location is an important topic we have also seen in facilities location we focus on plant location and the plant layout within plant location we have seen that there are number of factors that influence our decision related to the selection of a plant location and in today's class we have seen or in today's session we have covered the case study of uttarakhand and what are the policies the government is following in order to improve the industrial maybe belt of uttarakhand with this we conclude the today's session and in next session next session we will focus on the theoretical aspects behind the plant location thank you